you're actually just creating a lot of tension that's probably leading to more neck pain and more headaches. And so today I wanna to share with you four gadgets that I use to help me fix my tech neck and correct my posture. You're actually compressing the cervical spine. Tech neck is something that has started to plague all of us. And so today I wanna to share with you four gadgets that I use to help me fix my tech neck and correct my posture as well as two muscular cues that I use to support those efforts. First device that I have that I wanna share with you guys, you can actually see over my shoulder right there. This is a goose neck phone holder. It clamps on one end, so you can attach it to a desk, a nightstand, anywhere that you're gonna be using or interacting with your phone frequently. As you can see, I have mine hanging above my vanity because that's where I use it a lot when I do YouTube shorts for you guys. The goose neck on mine is extremely strong, so once you fix it into a position, it really takes a lot to move it into a new position, which is great because it's not wobbling and weaving all over the place and the weight of the cell phone isn't dragging it down or out of the position that you've put it in. The gooseneck can also be a lot more flexible than a traditional tripod or other kind of phone stand and it sort of blends into its surroundings a little bit better. So whether you have it on a desk, on a nightstand for when you're reading your phone in bed or wherever else you might put it, it's a little bit more streamlined than say a tripod. But say you're not actually actively interacting with your phone or using it for filming or something like that, but you do still want to be able to scroll through it, click on your notifications without bending over forward like that to see it laying flat on your desk. For that, I use this phone stand, which I actually got through a FabFitFun box, but I have found many, many similar models that I will link in the description box below for you guys. What I like about this one is that you can plug it in and the stand itself will act as a charger if your phone has that capability. But if you can adjust the height Again, it takes a little bit of effort to adjust the height, which is good because you don't want it dropping because of the weight of the phone. This one you can fold up and pack away to take with you when you travel, and it has an adjustable tilt as well, so you can get really good angles that way. And the positioning on it is great because I can just drop my eyes down to it and see those notifications instead of giving in to that urge to just tilt my neck forward if I have my phone laying flat on my desk instead. The third device that I highly, highly recommend, cannot live without this, is actually right behind you guys. I think you pronounce this brand name Wally. -E, although then again, that's also the name of the little cartoon robot, so maybe it's Walleye. But then that's the fish. Either way, this product has been life-changing for me. So this gadget is for your dual monitor arms, keeping those dual monitors at an ergonomic height for you. I'm 5'10 almost, so I am extremely tall, and I ordered the double height pillar rod. I'm not sure what you would call it. The great thing about this is how incredibly sturdy it is. My desk did come with a pre-drilled hole, so I was able to use the bolt attachment. If your desk doesn't have that, it does come with a very sturdy clamp attachment as well. But the great thing about it is I'm able to move these monitors in so many different angles to so many different heights. With this double height pole, it's almost tall enough for me to use this as a standing desk if I wanted to. These have saved my neck, especially since I work from home. I'm not hunched over a laptop. I'm not crouching down trying to get more on eye level with my monitors, with my screens. Even the standalone risers that you can get to rest a monitor on just truly are not tall enough if you are really sitting upright with good posture and decompressing your spine. The last thing I'm gonna share with you guys is a much more low tech item. I still really like to read books, physical books, not digital books. So things like my gooseneck and my phone stand that you could just lean an iPad onto just don't work for me. So when I am reading a book, I am still guilty of lounging on the couch or laying in bed in a less than ideal position for my neck and spine. But I am working on reading at my desk more. And when I do that, you're still prone to leaning forward on your elbows, dropping your neck forward, hunching over to be looking at your book. So I have this book stand that I've had for a really long time actually, but it's really nice because you can adjust again the angle you're, that you're viewing your book at. Just think of it kind of like a reclining chair, like a lawn chair, it works the same way. It has a really solid hinge here for you to rest the book on, and then these padded grippers that will hold your book open and hold your pages while you are reading. So if you are someone like myself from the more low-tech era of reading your books, that is another great way to help maintain good posture even while you're reading. But now, as I said at the beginning of this video, there are a couple of muscular cues that you need to keep in mind because no matter what fancy gadgets you're using, if you aren't giving your muscles the help that they need to support your upright posture, 
then you're kind of working against yourself. So here are the top two things that I have started doing that I have learned to cue myself to help me maintain good posture, avoid neck pain, and all of the headaches that go along with it. Number one, people always try to tell you, think of it as though you have a string pulling out through the top of your head. It's very important if to think about the placement of that invisible string. When people say the top of your head, most of us are gonna go right here, the place where you would sort of, you know, pat the top of your head in a child's game or something. But the top of your head, when you are talking about your posture, is really gonna be more back here towards the crown of your head. And the reason for that is if you think about somebody pulling a string vertically through the top center of your head, you're kind of automatically doing this. And when you're lifting your chin, you're actually compressing the cervical spine. Whereas if you think about it coming out through the crown of your head and you're lifting upward, your chin stays tucked and your cervical spine stays in a more neutral position. So if as you're sitting at your desk throughout the day reminding yourself of your posture and you are thinking about lifting upward through your head, maintaining that natural flow of the spine, think about lifting through the crown of your head, not to the top center. And the second thing to start thinking about is training those muscles of your back and shoulders that help you maintain an upright posture. The trick here is that most of us hear upper back and we're actually gonna be up in our traps and in the muscles around our neck. The more you're relying on those muscles to hold an upright posture and keep your head up, you're actually just creating a lot of tension that's probably leading to more neck pain and more headaches. But if you can instead get into the habit of using the muscles that are more down by your shoulder blades, between your shoulder blades, we don't need to get into the anatomical terms for these things, just as long as you can find them by sort of squeezing your shoulder blades together and feeling for yourself where that is, if you can get used to thinking of those as your posture muscles instead of the smaller muscles up here around your neck, you're going to be able to maintain your posture for longer and you're gonna cause yourself a lot less muscle strain and headaches in the meantime. So that's what I have for you guys today. I hope this helps in your battle against tech neck and I will see you in the next one. We really need to start valuing the fact that rest is part of the plan. Deep in midwinter, I always start to get really antsy. We go into hibernation mode just like the rest of nature at this time of year. So how do you lean into that natural rhythm of deep winter hibernation without losing sight of the goals that you've already devoted a month working towards at this point in time?